Welcome everyone and you know thank you for tuning to iNews. We really appreciate everyone's support. And uh, let me tell you, today's guest got a job that many of us could actually envy. And uh, it's Julian Tan, head of the Digital Business Initiatives and the Esports at Iconic Formula One. So welcome Julian and thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for having me, Simona. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> it's our pleasure. And you know, without any further ado, uh, let's talk esports. And you know, with the esports exploding in the popularity, this year you expanded the F1 esports series to future even more racing content and opportunities. So, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I mean, I think at its core, what we've begun to see is that our journey within esports has been a phenomenal growth story. You know, I think this year during the uh, the height of lockdown obviously accelerated that. But even before then, we'd seen really great success year on year in terms of the growth and, and engagement and interest within our esports product. So it was a natural sort of um, progression as we look to kind of grow our, uh, our offering within this space to increase the amount of content that we produce this year. Because I think that we always... We take a test and learn approach with a lot of our products. So when we put something out, we always go back to our audience and go back to our fans and ask them, oh, what is it that you want, you want to see more of, less of? And we iterate our product as we go. And that's a really important principle as we look towards creating um, entertainment products that our fans can enjoy. So growing our program this year in terms of increasing the number of races, increasing the number of live shows, um, streaming qualifying, for example, all of these were actually the product of having spoken to our fans and listening to them to understand what it is they wanted to kind of see more of. Um, I think the, the really encouraging thing, obviously, is that esports within F1 has been a real, um, it's been a real growth area for us. Um, we've seen record numbers in participation this year. We had 237,000 people participating this year. That's up from 109,000 last year. So, you know, 118% year on year growth, which is a really positive thing for us. And we're already seeing that the viewership that we're getting on our pro series this year is, um, you know, charting new records as well. So I think that's really encouraging for us. It's, it's telling us that what we're doing um, is working in the market. Our fans are engaging with it, which is really important to us. And we'll continue with this process of always um, putting our fan first and understanding what their needs are and then creating products that can help serve those needs. Excellent. And it's, 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 it's very satisfying to hear, you know, that there's such a massive increase, you know, with, uh, with the previous years. And as we're talking about the more content, the F1 recently also launched its second eSports championship, the F1 Mobile Racing eSports Series. So how important is a mobile um, gaming in terms of engaging the Gen Z and Gen Alpha, and, you know, even like creating a sustainable future for F F1 as a whole? It is immensely important. The reality is that within gaming, mobile is the fastest growing segment and is already accounting for 50% of all of gaming. So the natural, um, you know, it's, an, it's, a, it's a place to be in. Um, it's a really important place to me to ensure that we are starting to, even if it's dipping our toes in, at least trying to be involved in and, and trying to shape our expertise and develop our expertise in this space. It is really important as well because um, mobile offers really a different level in terms of reach, in terms of um, you know, the fact that it is a free to download, free to play game. You're able to reach a, lo a larger audience that way. And also, as you referenced there, Simona, around the younger generation, the reality is more and more Gen Zs, Gen Alphas, they're spending time gaming and they're spending more time on their phones. And they're also spending more time mobile gaming. So it's really important that we create experiences and we create initiatives that play where, um, where you know, our future audiences will play. And uh, you know, at its very core, I think, our mobile championship this year is really about creating those additional touch points for our fans to feel like they can get involved with the world of Formula One. Um, it helps us reach out to exactly the younger generation, the Gen Zs, the Gen Alphas, um, which, you know, I think that as a sport like ours, 
Um, we have obviously challenges in, in ensuring that we can create a pipeline of fans into our, our sport because the reality is F1 does have an aging fan base, but it's through initiatives like esports and mobile esports that we can start to you know, build a momentum towards creating that pipeline of fans into, into our, forts, our, our sport to you know, ensure the longevity of the sport in the future. Exactly. As you said, you can attract the wider audience with the, with the mobile game, gaming, let's say. But, you know, Top F1 was already involved with the esports even before COVID-19 crisis, which accelerated, you know, the, the, the esports booming. But how important do you think esports like a virtual Grand Prix races has been at keeping fans engaged and entertained during this crisis? Can you see actually the difference, you know, and what job it did, you know? Mm. It's a great question, Simona. The virtual Grand Prix that we put on during lockdown was a huge, huge success, which I think just reflected that our fans, both existing fans and also new fans, they wanted to see live sport. And if you're not able to see live sport because, you know, the reality was all live sport had gone dark during the height of lockdown, there was still a space for esports. And I think this was a really interesting and also a key message that, that uh, we managed to unearth during lockdown that whether it's virtual, whether it's real, the fact it is, it is a live sport. And our fans really, really did enjoy it. Um, we were, I think at its very core, we understand that the role that sports plays in a fan's life is really as a form of escape. You know, people watch sports and entertainment to escape the real world. They want to have a form of relief, right? And if we're not able to do that through the through our real life races, our virtual races could still do a very good job at doing that. So, you know, I think the, the fan reception has been phenomenal. Um, as you say, it's continued to help us to engage our fans during, during lockdown, which in itself had, you know, a multitude of benefits because, you know, when we came back racing, once we were allowed to come back racing safely, um, it was in July, we had, we, we had seen record digital numbers of people tuning in to our, to our races and engaging with our real life races, which whilst it's difficult to, to attribute that, you know, how, how many percent of that is due to the virtual Grand Prix, I have a strong hypothesis that the fact that we had our virtual Grand Prix during lockdown that had a positive contribution to, you know, the increased engagement when we came back racing in the real world again. And when we also continue to... Um, to uh, launch our pro series this year, we also saw great, great, huge numbers, in fact, record numbers as well, which in itself is reflective, I think, of the exposure that lockdown had given on esports as a, as a product, just more generally. People are a, a lot more familiar about the concept of watching esports now because, you know, during the height of the pandemic, we had our virtual Grand Prix on. So there's more interest, more familiarity, which I think is really, really very positive because as a product, the esports product that we put on is actually a really compelling show. The racing that we put on is a really exhilarating form of racing because all of our cars are equal. The drivers are more risk-taking. So it's really creating a level of racing that you can't replicate in the real world. So, you know, for people with now a bigger sort of... Uh, exposure you know they're more familiar with the concept and they've tuned in they've really been able to engage in it and also worth mentioning as well i think during lockdown by keeping the lights on at formula one through our esports initiatives we we're also able to continue to deliver value to our sponsors our broadcast partners who you know didn't necessarily have um, live content to put on we've created live content for them to uh, to distribute to fans that fans enjoyed exactly and uh, you know talking about the uh... The engagement and traditional sports compared to the other esports, the sim racing has a big hit, has been a big hit with the traditional sport fans. And you know, as you said, even because the mainstream broadcasters significantly increased the coverage as well. So why do you think it is? Why do you think that sim racings are massively more popular than maybe other esports with the with the traditional sports fans? It's a great question. I think at its core, the fact is racing is very easy to understand. You don't need to be a gamer 
to understand that to win a race is the first to cross the line. So that's a real advantage for us in F1, right? We're able to attract an audience that is our gaming audience, but also make it appealing to our non-gaming audience as well. Um, you know, when you compare it, obviously, to say a League of Legends or a Fortnite, you kind of need to play the game in order to follow the esports broadcasts. And if you don't play the game, you can get lost very easily. But for racing, we have the advantage that it's an easy sport to understand. And also, it's a very relatable sport in the sense that when you're watching our esports competitors compete in our series, they're doing so with a wheel and a pedal and a simulator. It's a very immersive form of, of gaming. They're not, com they're not competing with a, a controller or a keyboard. So that as, a, as someone who's watching, it helps, I guess, bridge that gap a little bit. You know, it helps them kind of uh, take that first step, I suppose, into esports and understand that, okay, it's actually quite a relevant um, form of esports as it relates to the real world in the sense that you have these huge overlaps. And, you know, the fact that our, the stories of our drivers as well, who are going from becoming gamers to becoming real life racers and vice versa, professional racers coming into esports, that kind of crossover is really important because, again, it creates a level of familiarity for, say, the traditional sports fans to be able to engage. Um, and in large part has been, I think, one of the factors as to why we've been able to kind of attract an audience that is a very diverse audience. So, you know, we've got gaming audiences, we've got non-gaming audiences, we've got race fans, all tuning into our, um, to our broadcast and really enjoying it. Exactly. There is the aspect of the fam familiarity, I would say, you know, as the people are very familiar with the, with the Formula One iconic brand. And of course, F1 eSports relies on, on that authentic virtual experience. So yes. how closely do you work with the real world F1 team? and maybe even the developer of official Formula One game. Like, what's the, what's, what's the ecosystem between all five? Mm. Simona, that's a great question. Authenticity, when you mention authenticity, that is so, so important whenever you're developing any product to begin with, but especially in esports. And this is, the, this is exactly why, from a strategic perspective, we felt it was incredibly important that we developed an esports product that felt authentic, that is authentic. And so involving the 10 Formula One teams, official Formula One teams, is part of that, is part of that ambition. We, we want to create an esports competition where we differentiate ourselves from everyone else. The reality is to create an esports competition is relatively easy. You only need a game, some rules and some prizes, and all of a sudden you have, you have an esports competition. So we, had to, we wanted to create a product that had a competitive advantage. And a big part of that is getting the 10 F1 teams involved because you're going from the prize being a prize, prize money, which we still have, but going from that to actually you can be signed on to becoming an official member of an F1 team is a life-changing experience. It's something that money cannot buy. So that's really important for us as we position our esports series as something that's really special. So working with the 10 F1 teams, so, so important because, you know, they, they, they as well understand the opportunity that we have in esports and the importance really as um, players within motorsports, you know, involving themselves in esports because this is, this is a huge growth area for us and a really important area when we, when we talk about engaging our new audiences. And of course, we work very closely with our developer, our, our licensee. Um, Codemasters, they develop the game. This is what the esports competition is based on. And they are intertwined with our working group. They are part of our working group. We work very closely with them as we do with our esports operator in Gfinity to create the esports competition that people know and love. Um, and it's important that you know these sort of regular, close collaborations and integrations with our partners, whether that be with Codemasters or the F1 teams is done because that's how you create an authentic product. And it shows in, at the end of the day, it shows in your product when you're working closely with them to develop something that's special. It definitely shows. And um, uh, talking about, you know, also about partnerships in terms of commercial involvement in a, 
and F1 esports, are there any plans to increase maybe very popular and trendy game advertising, in-game advertising opportunities and other partnerships? Because I believe, you know, the, the F1 is, uh, is a great space for you know, commercial in-game advertising opportunities, let's say. Yeah, no, it's a great question and certainly a growing area within um, the wider commercial opportunities. We operate in a very unique environment in Formula One where our game replicates the real world. And this is a, you know, it's in many ways is a good thing because it kind of going back to the authenticity point, it creates an authentic environment. It allows people to engage into F1 and beyond the commercial, direct commercial benefits of having in-game advertising, let's not forget that we are in esports because esports is meant to be one of our key pillars to growing our real life sport. That is the strategic positioning of how we use our esports um, properties because at the end of the day, we want to create these products to reach out to a younger audience and want them to become F1 fans. We want them to come into F1 through gaming, come into F1 through esports, and then become an F1 fan, right? Um, so that's really important in terms of that kind of authentic, representative um, environment in game. We obviously have great commercial partners who help us put on the F1 eSports series. We've got Aramco as our uh, presenting sponsor. We've got DHL as one of our founding partners, official sponsor, and Fanatec as well. And they represent a good diverse combination of different brands who've come into eSports, um, whether that be a completely endemic brand like Fanatec is or a non-endemic brand like DHL and, and Aramco who are our, you know, our global sponsors in the real world who have come on this journey with us on esports, which I think is a, a terrific thing. Um, you know, I think in-game advertising will continue to grow and the opportunities there are certainly something that we're look, actively looking into. Um, we obviously want to balance the wider, you know, commercial picture. It's one of the different components. We feel that um, obviously we sort of being 36 months in, we're still also developing and scratching the surface on what's possible within the sponsorship realm, which we've done a, a range of different activations that have actually started to uh, show some really great um, opportunities, whether that be physical activations, like what we did um, with DHL, for example, at our Grand Prix themselves, we have our F1 esports activation within that one of the seats is a DHL seat, for example, and that feeds into the wider competition. So I think there are a lot of great opportunities for brands to activate their brands in a meaningful way using esports beyond say i would say uh, branding which obviously is important but it's not uh, the be all end all there are a lot of opportunities within esports that brands can get involved in and start to activate and tell their story to their to the audience and to their fans in a really meaningful way yeah exactly i mean you could not say it better julian i mean definitely there is there needs to be the balance when it comes to in-game advertising and even like a, you know advertising in general let's say and um you know and my very last question is so how big do you see the F -E f1 esports getting and you know will it ever knock real life f1 off the podium like what's your personal opinion so from a strategic perspective, as I mentioned, esports really is that pillar into the real life Formula One, that it's its role. Um, you know, I think when we embarked in the journey of uh, esports in 2017, nobody could have predicted in 2020, we would be going through a global pandemic, but having mobilized in esports and growing really um, very strongly over the, over the past years, it put us in a very strong position to put on the virtual Grand Prix, for example, um, you know, I think that the reality is, thinking about it from an industry perspective, gaming is becoming a bigger and bigger part of people's lives in terms of entertaining themselves. So the natural progression is that esports will continue to grow. I think what is interesting is we, like any digital product, it is a fast moving space. What is important is that we try and ensure that we are continually innovating at the present and always putting ourselves at the forefront. Um, personally, for me, I don't tend to look too far out, particularly for, you know, five to 10 years for an, an asset that is still relatively new, growing very rapidly. But if, you know, the signs generally show that it's, um, it's growing very healthily and that's a great thing. And great thing for Formula One as well, because we're able to use esports in innovative ways that touch 
beyond just the kind of tournament media asset side of things, media entertainment side of things into how can we actually break down barriers into our sport? How can we bring more immersive experiences to our fans to experience the world of F1 because not everyone gets a chance to jump into an F1 car. So there are a lot of opportunities that surround the, the wider industry that is esports um, for us uh, specifically as a sport that we're really excited about. And we're also really excited that, you know, our esports offerings are also continue to, continuing to grow at, at record speed. Um, and people, most importantly, our fans are enjoying the, the concept and the products that we're putting out. Because I can, all, I, I would remember, you know, when we first launched our first ever esports show, we always look at the comments and seeing what people say about it. And in the beginning, there was a lot of maybe a little bit of skepticism, you know, why would I watch someone else play a video game? This, you know, I want to watch the real life Formula One. But now the sentiments has changed completely. People are like, oh my God, this is an amazing form of racing, which is, I think it just goes to show um, how far we've come and how far more we can continue to push, um, you know, traditional racing entertainment um, for our fans and the wider opportunities that surround that. Exactly. And, you know, what I really appreciate and, you know, the charity from the, you know, esports companies, I mean, you can see the difference because, you know, esports companies in general really care about their, about their fan. You know, they really listen to feedbacks from, from the audience and from the viewers and from the players. So definitely the, the esports industry will, will grow and, you know, who knows when it all will go. But, you know, Julia, thank you so much for, for sharing with us, you know, your unique insights. And we will definitely be keeping up with the F1. And hopefully we're gonna, you know, be in touch again and update about another achievement and great results from, from, your, from your team. Thank you very much for having me, Simona. It's been a, it's been a great conversation. Thank you, Julian. Have a fantastic day. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.